<laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Nicole Whitlock with the Ecom Sellers, and this is the Ecom Sellers Podcast. I have with me on this journey my amazing co host, my partner in crime, Kelly, the Ecom Mom Ward. And we come to you every Monday, Central Standard 3, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, to share with you e commerce news, tips, and more. Today, we're going to be talking about what you should be selling in january or sourcing in january either one sourcing or selling in january so before we get into that we're going to cover the news and then after we cover the news then we're going to get into the e-commerce tips on what you should be sourcing or selling today so share this out with a friend let somebody else know about the day the e-com sellers podcast and uh hopefully you'll tune in so with that kelly how are things going with you how are things going in your business what's happening in your world I'm, you know, making the sales it doesn't kind of slow down because I've really been working on getting my office better organized. And yeah. <laughs> that, and that takes up a lot of time. Um, me oh. too. Not necessarily my, well, my office does need to be organized, but just trying to get a bunch of stuff organized and working with my kids on things that they need to learn. So we have first quarter goals. And we have those documented. I got to laminate them today, put them up on the wall so they can just check them off the list. And uh, then we're going to establish those second quarter goals because if I give them too much at one time, they're just overwhelmed. So I already have goals for the year, but that's just too much to share with kids. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, getting uh, organized is one of the things that we're working on as well. And I'm getting sales um, and my son, Tony, is going to be taking it much more active role in my business in 2023. You know, he's like a roller coaster ride or he's like some of the people that we coach sometimes. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, which is so frustrating. So I'm like, Lou, look. how do diets. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, look, dude, you are going to be 18. I'm going to need you to be consistent. Okay. We're done with this. We're done with this. Oh, you're working and you did a good job and then you stop like, Last year, I don't know how many print-on-demand designs he got to. He was supposed to hit, his target was 90. And I think he got to like 45. Now, that's not bad. But again, I was like, come on. You could have made it to 90. You could have made it to 90. So anyway, Kelly and I are going to share with you the news. Hopefully, you all are having an amazing MLK Day, Martin Luther King holiday, and celebrating that. So with that, Ms. Kelly, the floor is yours to talk about the news. All right. Uh, Let's see with eBay. eBay's there found some quirks with the the, um, the little standard envelopes that you can like ship um, like baseball cards and postage stamps to postcard stuff with. Mm -hmm. Especially like if you're doing an auction and you start it at five bucks and it goes over the $20 valuable threshold and you had the the uh standard envelope as your way of shipping and then you can't use it because you would say your auction went to 23 dollars. well now your item sold for over 20 dollars, which is the most um the highest price maximum that you can send something um with that envelope so they also um like they're having, you know, well, either there's no tracking with it or the PayPal's not, you know, accepting it that it was shipped because there's no scans. So there's just some quirks with it. So eBay's probably going to be working with that and everything. And also um, the price on, um, on, on the cost to ship that out is going up in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, it's going from like, it's only going up like three cent difference. It's not like huge. Mm-hmm. Um, let me pull this up. I'm looking it up on my phone. Um, I didn't feel like writing notes. Um, <laughs> it's going to go from 57 cents to 60 cents on January 22nd. Um, and the that's for a one ounce pack. A two ounce package is going to go from 81 cents to 84 cents. And a three ounce package is going to go from a dollar five to a dollar eight. Um, and there's okay. also some changes that, that go with the USPS rates besides the, um, the standard envelope that um, 
the eBay has. Um, signature confirmation is going to increase 15 cents to $3.25. Okay. The non standard length fee, 30 inches, is decreasing. They're like actually decreasing a price. Woo! Decreasing from $15 to $7 for parcel select ground. So not priority, but parcel select. And the non-standard volume fee for anything over two cubic feet is increasing from $15 to $25 for priority mail and priority, priority mail express. And again, just a reminder, they're eliminating the regional rate boxes prior for priority mail and priority mail international. Uh, it's, all, it's all happening January 22nd. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see. E Amazon's return shipping fee policy is now in effect. It took effect January 14th. Um, this is if you are a merchant fulfilled seller and the customer sends something back and the price that the cost to ship it is greater than um, what the prepaid label was. That's going to come out of the um, seller's pocket, the difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sellers are like, well, you know, I might ship in this little box and it'd be fine. But then the customer sends it back in a box that, you know, is three times too big. And, you know, the dimensions gonna be off and everything, and then I'm gonna be charged for that. It was not my fault that the you know the, that the customer is sending it like that. But, so, yeah, <laughs> a lot of sellers are not happy about that. I get it. I understand. And um, let's. Ebay um, is going to is to start using a a learning machine to um, classify listings based on their titles. So that I guess when you put the titles in, uh -huh. it can actually kind of classify where it needs to go. They um, did some kind of contest with um, students in that computer programming and these two gentlemen came up with the best idea and um, I would say I try to pronounce their names who won but I can't pronounce them so uh, <laughs> but they're going to be they won like internships to work with eBay to um, do this program to help classify listings based on their titles I'm confident they're using AI because <laughs> there's a lot of conversations being had about chat GPT and we're actually using chat GPT as well, but I'm confident there's some AI involved. Mm -hmm. um, sellers can now add Amazon payments and reviews to their own sites. Um, Amazon's making buy with prime payments available for people to put on their site. Okay. Um, so that, you know, they can get, you know, they can be on your own website, but still have the two day free shipping with prime available and they will charge the sellers a fee, of course. Of and of course, course and either, those items will most likely be stored at the FBA warehouses so that they can do this to, you know two-day free shipping, you know, like with Prime. But, you know, you have your own website and you want to, you know, have that two-day shipping that everyone is so used to now. Yeah. Um, eBay. eBay is, uh, has created a ticket to investigate disappearing drafts. You know, you make a bunch of drafts yeah. and... I heard about that. Those are recent drafts versus mm -hmm. like your old ones. Your old ones seem fine, but anything you've recently created in the last couple of weeks, 
It's doing something weird. Mm -hmm. So they like, please let, you know, they need to, they want to that be reported so that they can, you know, be able to research it, what, what's happening to cause this, mm -hmm. you know, so. And I think that was pretty much the news I saw. All right. Okay. Well, going to change up the screen a little bit. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the news. I got to figure out how to close this window. But anyway, let me share my screen. I know, Kelly. I'm tired, too. <laughs> I'm tired too. Hold on, I'll wait for this thing to pop up. We're going to get into the news. All right. Am I sharing my screen? Uh, no, not yet. There it is. There we go. All right. The first piece of news comes to us from Digital Commerce, Digital 360, three, Digital Commerce 360. Um, online. Oh. I was trying to figure out why my screen dimmed. It's because my laptop is unplugged. <laughs> Nothing like doing a broadcast and then like, oh, why'd I die? Um, <laughs> so online holiday sales topped 1.14 trillion, 1 trillion, 100 and I guess, I don't know. It's, I don't know what 1.14 trillion is, but... <laughs> Is that, 100 and, is that 140 billion? I don't know. Anyway, uh, globally. So globally, that's what where you can go and read this article from Digital Commerce. Uh, that is a lot of sales globally. They said returns reached 1.39 billion. Woo! For 13% of the total holiday orders. That's a 63% rise in returns year over year, which is bad. <laughs> that's a lot of returns and that's bad. That is not good that it went up 63% globally. So that's a lot. Just want you guys to know that. Um, let's see. Um, BOPIS, which I have to go look that up, accounted for nearly one out of every five online orders placed globally. This holiday season, traffic referrals from social media hit an all time high. So, again, when we're telling you to share your listings on social media, and that includes TikTok, that they said that it reached an all time high this holiday season, driving 12% of all mobile traffic. And Belgium, Italy, and the United States represented the countries with the most social media minded shoppers. So, if you don't think that driving traffic using Instagram Reels, TikTok, Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts, um, and just regular like cross-sharing onto your social media. You don't think it matters. It does. It does. It does. It does. Uh, global online sales for exceeded. Maybe we already talked about that. Um, and in the U.S., online sales reached $270 billion in November and December, according to Salesforce. So these numbers are coming to us from Salesforce. I think before we had listened... Uh, looked at numbers from Adobe and things like that. So they're talking about Salesforce estimates during the holiday period is higher than the estimated, the estimate last week from Adobe. So yeah, I think this is a really interesting article. If you're wanting to look at some of the numbers and take a deeper dive, you can go to digital commerce. The article is digital commerce 360, sorry. And the um, article is from January 9th of 2023. So go take a look at that. Um, the next article comes to us from Fox News, and it's talking about Republicans vote to abolish the IRS eliminating income sales tax. Now, I don't think this is going to, it's not going to pass the Senate and it's not going to pass the president's death. So it's a gesture, I think. But, you know, I would say I would love for the IRS to be gone. <laughs> But as an entrepreneur, uh, yeah, and for no other reason than that. <laughs> but yeah, um, I thought this was interesting. And again, it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, if you think it does, it will, fantastic. But it's got to pass both the House and the Senate before it makes it to the president's desk for signing. 
for those who don't understand this, how the sequence of events works. So <laughs> just sharing that information. But if you want to go read that article, go to Fox News and you can go check it out. This comes to us from Business Insider. Sometimes Business Insider is like flaky and sometimes it'll let me see it and sometimes it won't. So Amazon will take years to recover from its warehouse overbuilding binge that it did during the pandemic. And 2022, it still added a third of Walmart's total capacity. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I know that I think last week's podcast or the week before that, we talked about them like putting the kibosh on some of the warehouses that they had in the pipeline and or that they were planning to go live with. So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, so you can read this article through Business Insider. They're talking about the Amazon warehouses and that they canceled or delayed. Yeah, I mentioned this, I think, in the previous uh, podcast of the one before that, where they saved up to four billion in 2022 by canceling or delaying warehouse openings. So they're scaling back on their warehouse expansion. I know here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, like okay, we have. I think we're at five. Oh, I lost Kelly. Hold on, Kelly's back. Just a minute. Let me get Kelly back on here. <laughs> Kelly, I, I think we lost you for just a second. Are you back? Are you back? All right. Well, we'll just wait for her to come back. Sometimes it doesn't work. Add to the screen. All right. There we go. We're back. Kelly's back. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway. I hit something on my phone. and. <laughs> All right. Well, Kelly's back. So, um, yeah, um, I just think this is interesting to see what's going to happen. I know here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I believe we're up to five warehouses in the Dallas Fort Worth area. There's a lot of warehouses. And one of them is like, I want to say four miles from my house. I didn't even realize it was that close until I went driving the other day. And I was like, whoa, that's a where that's a wall. Uh, sorry, Amazon warehouse. I was a little shocked by that. So we'll see what happens. But we have a lot in the Dallas Fort Worth area. It's crazy. So this article comes to us from Best Life through uh, MSN News. And UPS is closing 50 post offices effective immediately. Now, these may not, may or may not affect you, but I think that this article is worth reading if you are a person that is going to be affected. They say that in mid December, USPS temporarily closed around 200 post offices and they're closing some more. So you want to be prepared for um, these closures, especially if you're near the area where it's going to impact you. And you need to have a backup plan if one of them is closing near you. So uh, this comes to us from MSN. You can do a search on Best Life. USPS is closing 50 um, post offices effective immediately. And I don't have the date on this article, but they are talking about December and January. So it's not. It's either a January article or a December article. I think it was a January article. All right. This comes to us from USA Today. Tax filing deadlines for 2023. January the 23rd is the first day you can file your taxes, IRS announces. So I don't know. <laughs> Some of you might be ready to file your taxes. You might actually be ready to file your taxes. And that's fantastic. But if you're not, January 23rd is the earliest. So if you're looking for a tax refund of some type, uh, yeah, you can file your sheet. We lost Kelly again. So Kelly will be back in just a second. <laughs> we lost Kelly again. That's okay. We'll get her back. <laughs> All right, Kelly. <laughs> we lost you again. Something happened. <laughs> All right. We were just talking about the IRS and the fact that you can file your taxes early. So if you want as early as the 23rd, that's the earliest you can file them. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, okay. I'm just not I have so difficulty. much. Yeah, I got Last so much stuff I gotta do for taxes. I gotta still finish up doing my <laughs> bookkeeping from last year. I understand. I I totally understand. All right. So this comes to us from Men's Health. Amazon warehouse sale 2023. How to save even more on used goods. So you can check out this article through Men's Health. This is a recent article, I think. Yeah, January the 12th was when it was pu published. And um, Amazon warehouses, 
actually do sales and you can go through this article. They'll show you where to find the things and how much you can pay for them. And some of them, they'll, of course, they'll list on Amazon.com, but some of them you can actually find them in different places. So to see the warehouse deals, um, definitely come to this article, Men's Health. They're having a sale on the used goods. A lot of these, 90% of them, if not more, are returns or things that were damaged in the warehouse. <laughs> returns, inventory that was pulled down, inventory where people said, you know what, don't send it back to me. So they didn't want to pull back the inventory. Um, and so it's going to be any of those categories. That's more than likely what the majority of these are. All right, Bed Bath & Beyond made the news again. They were in last... Um, they were in the last uh, last podcast, and they're in this podcast. So Bed Bath & Beyond is closing stores, making changes as losses mount. Uh, so they're closing some more stores. What I need to do is I need to go figure out which stores are closing in my area. So you can, this comes to us from the Carrier Post online. Again, Carrier Post online. And the fact that Bed Bath & Beyond is closing some stores is a big deal. It is a big deal, guys. So go take a look at that. And then this article comes to us from People. Another thing about uh, Amazon's Outlet released epic winter deals on coats, jackets, and sweaters. Yeah, starting at $9. So this is in People Magazine, and it is uh, the uh, January 14th um, article. So Amazon's Outlets. So you can come here and look at the Outlet deals. Maybe these are products that you can source now and resell them next year. Uh, based on the prices, like so resell them. I mean, it's an opportunity. If you have the money, you have the space, uh, why not? If you can sell the brand, go for it. <laughs> but they've got some outlet deals that uh, are probably worth a look. And I'm sure that you'll find some of those electronics as well, the outlet deals. So you just have to do a search to see where you can. He says, okay, you can head over to Amazon's Outlet Hub to pursue everything that's on sale, the markdown. And those that are marked down are released every day. So go to Amazon's Outlet Hub, Amazon's Outlet Hub. Now i got to go click on this just because. <laughs> so once I click on it, I can see overstock deals. I can see under $10 deals. I can see premium brands and I can see Amazon brands. So again, once you go to that article, you can click, go to Amazon Outlet deals and go take a look and see what you can find. Warehouse deals, everything. All right. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Okay. And I know that we have, what do we have here? I mean, so Amazon also has like bins stores or people who buy lots from Amazon and open up bin stores. And so we have some in the, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area as well. Okay. So now we're going to transition and go. Is there anything else you want to add, Kelly, based on those articles that I was sharing? No. Nope. Okay. We lost you a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to go over the e-commerce news tips and more. So before we get into the e-commerce news tips and more, I did want to let you all know that we do have uh, the entrepreneur Bible study that is coming up. I mentioned it in last week's podcast. If you are a person that just wants to move differently in 2023, and I am definitely that person who wants to move differently in 2023, I invite you to go sign up for the Entrepreneur's Bible Study. Um, you can go to swiy.co forward slash Entrepreneur Bible Study. Again, swiy.co forward slash Entrepreneur Bible Study. It'll be 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Look, I am not a scholar. I am not a theologian. I am not a Bible expert. I am just an entrepreneur who wants to fellowship and do a deeper dive in the word with other fellow entrepreneurs. I'm also a mom, um, also many other things. And I just feel like this is something that's actually been on my heart. I wanted to start it last year and it's been on my heart for a while. And so we're starting it this year. Because, you know, I think God told me they started last year and I didn't. So, you know, he has a way of getting your attention when you don't do something he tells you to do. I don't know if you know that or not, but he does have a way of getting your attention. So um, anyway, I invite you all to check it out. I don't know. We, am I showing my full screen? Hold on just one second. I don't know because, yeah, I am. Okay. So yeah. um, 
So yeah, I invite you to sign up. You can go to swiy.co forward slash entrepreneur Bible study. And we're actually going to be going through uh, the studies that we're going to be covering are the ones that are on Bible.com. They have a bunch of Bible plans there. And so if you go over to Bible.com and then you click on plans because you have um, you have Bibles, Bible scriptures, if you want to go through that. You can go through plans, you can go through videos. If you do a search on entrepreneur, if you want to do this on your own, you're more than welcome to. They have a lot of choices. The entrepreneur's battle, be an entrepreneur, the a millennial king, a kingdom entrepreneur, the kingdom driven entrepreneur, the five star entrepreneur, the values of an entrepreneur, God, the first entrepreneur, the perseverance of an entrepreneur, 24 hour entrepreneur, qualities of an entrepreneur, like entrepreneur, prayer, strategy, and praying the scriptures. Um, and what forgiveness means as an entrepreneur, like they have a lot of great ones that we'll cover. And instead of going through them, like in an entire week, like we're going to cover like day one will be covered over a week and day two and day three. So then that way, when we meet on Sundays, we'll just cover one day at a time, giving us the opportunity to go through, you know, um, as many as we can in a year that may only be six plans or whatever it happens to be. But if you want to join us on the journey, um, it is a private meeting, so you have to yeah. register if you're interested. And um, I think it'll be an opportunity for you to make some different decisions in 2023 and to pray about the decisions that you make in your business as an entrepreneur. Is there anything else you want to add to that, Kelly? No. no okay. All right. My brain's kind of brain tired right now. A girl, I understand. Trust me on that one. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get into nine items that you should source and or sell or just sell or just source in January. So I'm going to let Kelly take number one. Fitness equipment, accessories, and clothes. Everyone's going, trying to get off that weight they gained back or, you know, you know, the holidays, they gained that extra 10 pounds and they want to lose it off. They're getting back to the, the gym. They're going buying. Um, I just bought me today or yesterday a new um, Fitbit. I updated oh. my my uh, my what my little watch thing. I got me an, a new one. Um, so because they was on special and it was the last day yesterday, so I had to get it. Um, <laughs> Because I, you know, I'm using, I'm tracking my food, and so they need all the, you know, you need um, all that, you know, fitness stuff to work out. I mean, I work out. I, I do martial arts, so I have to. I wear my 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 uh, dojo clothes, my uh, uniform. But um, yeah, you need all that equipment, you know, bikes and weights and. Stretch bands and, Stretch bands and <laughs> shoes and they want to wear the cute yoga pants and all, you know, they got to have pockets in them and right, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, if you are looking to, I mean, here's the deal. Like, these are things that you may actually be buying for yourself as well. So if you're buying it, other people are interested in it. This is typically something that is a regular cycle. So this would be something that you write down to source and sell in 2024. The Lord says the same and we're all still here. This would be something that you would source and sell. So you would want to start sourcing it either November or December. If you're going to do wholesale, definitely do November or even October. If you're going to do retail arbitrage, make sure that you're paying attention when the stores put it out. That's when you need to list yours and uh, take advantage of this. We're talking about everything from the kettlebells to the mats that people like roll out to the steps um, that people use to step on to the water bottles, like all that stuff. So anything. You should say the videos too, but now you just go on YouTube and watch free workout videos. Yeah. You can just watch the free ones. So yeah, check it out. All right. Number two, Kelly reminded me of this one. I don't know how I forgot, but anyway, Devotion, daily devotional, self-help, self-care, self-improvement books. I mean, this is, again, the beginning of the year. People want to do a reset on their lives. They want to do a reset from where they are right now. And so these are some of the things that they think about. And 
they may just want to get a devotional, something that they can read every day or something that's going to help them along the journey. Maybe they've gone through a lot and they want something to help with their mental health and just kind of improving their state of where they are, you know, in this life's journey or something for self-help, self-improvement. Self-improvement can be self-improvement in your business. Uh, it could be self-improvement in your family life, your relationships, your whatever it happens to be. Mentally. Mentally. Yes. Um, it could be everything. So um, these types of books, uh, improving your health as well, self-help, self-care, uh, things that you can do to improve your health, um, as well as your mental state of where you are. All right. Cookbooks and diet books and everything that goes with it in the kitchen. Like, um, you know, once we go for their special whatever diet plan they want to go to if they want to do keto or paleo or maybe they just want to do a healthier eating and not do a certain you know diet but looking for healthier foods to cook um plus they might want to get a kitchen scale to be able to be more accurate in their weighing of food for when they're tracking their uh, their food so and maybe they they're like well I'm going to be cooking at home more, so I'm going to have to have more pots and pans, or I'm going to need to have an Instapot or a slow cooker, you know, because I plan to cook. Maybe I'm going to save on um, eating out, cut it back on eating out and cook at home more to save money. And I need cookbooks and the, all the equipment, you know, a slow cooker and such to um, do all this. I agree. That's what the next one is, which is kitchen appliances and kitchen accessories. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly and I think the same. So yeah. Um, the other thing is containers. Like I have been doing this for years, which is prepping the meals for the week. We do them on Sundays and we've been doing that for years and, you know, having those, uh, containers to be able to put stuff in, to be able to store full food, or if you're trying to do portion control this year, actually having the individual containers to be able to prep your meals in so that that way you're not tempted to eat out and to fall off the wagon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, getting all the things that are going to help you to be successful on your journey. If weight loss and fitness and health is all part of your 2023 plan, then, you know, getting those things. And so people are still buying them. They're going to continue to be focused on and committed to their journey all the way into February and even some in March um, because of the fact that they want to get summer gorgeous. So for the next three months, all the things that we've listed so far are going to be the things that people are buying for the next three months because they want to be ready for the summer. They want to be hot and fabulous for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Organizational items. So items to get there. Maybe they're like, my office is a mess. I need more bins and ways to uh, be more organized so that I'm not spending extra, wasting time looking for something. And it takes me two hours to find it. And I've lost two hours of time to work. So Maybe they come out, you know, they need these organizational items to, you know, colored bins and stuff to label stuff with and such. Yeah. That pen tray or that pen cup and that pencil tray and the paper clips. And maybe you need some folders and whatever it is or something to stick on the wall so that you can write on the dry erase boards. Anything that's going to help you to be more organized in your business or in your personal life. Maybe you need things for your kids, like the command hooks for backpacks, like things that are like, we're not doing this in 2023. We're done with this. We're not doing it in 2023. So when you decide whatever that is, you're probably going to put a system in place so you don't have to do that. <laughs> um, holiday clearance and winter clearance. So there's going to be, uh, there's already like all the Christmas clearance at uh, the Dollar Tree. They got stuff, some of the things down to 25 cents. Y'all, I don't know if you've been paying attention or not. Um, there's some that are 50 cents um, at uh, Five Below. We were just there today and they've got stuff at 50% off. That's holiday. Uh, winter oh, stuff. 
seventy percent off today. Ah, see, there you go. Uh, you go into your Walgreens or CVS. They're trying to clear all that space because they need to reclaim it for Valentine's Day. So again, and or St. Patty's Day. So they've got to reclaim some of the same space in some of the smaller stores. Same thing with your grocery stores. Don't overlook the opportunity to go swing by those. And then winter clearance, believe it or not. Yes, we're still in winter. We are. But I told you guys, if you walk into Walmart, do not be surprised if you walk by Walmart and they've already got swimsuits out. <laughs> oh, they, are, they have them out at Target. We went to Target the other day. I'm like, dang, I got the swimsuits out already. <laughs> and it's still snow on the ground in a lot of places. So my point is, like, uh, yeah, the stores have a schedule and they're putting that stuff out for a reason. Now, some of it could have to do with spring break and people need to buy swimsuits for spring break. So they know exactly what people are buying. So take a hint from them, take a clue from them and pay attention to what they put out and when they put it out. Um, but yeah, winter is going to be going on clearance probably you're going to start seeing a lot more clearance for winter at the end of February. And uh, you'll see more and more spring coming out, but there's a lot of spring clothes already out. <laughs> I was like, okay, fine. See winter accessories, supplies or equipment. So yeah, we're talking about swimsuits and stuff, but it's still cold and, and snowy and such. I will in most places we're in texas so we haven't had snow yet this year hopefully we'll skip that um but people still need the you know the heaters or um supplies maybe they had some had some supplies and they ran out and they need to resupply on oh, their yeah. you know or their kids lost their mittens for the 15th time and they need more mittens. And <laughs> <laughs> Think about the ice scrapers for windows yeah. because for some, like in Texas, we normally, if we get an ice storm, we're going to get it in Jan at the end of January and February. We don't get ice storms in December or we, like that's when we normally, if we're going to get an ice storm and we, we don't get them often, but when we do, that's when they happen. Um, so, you know, ice scrapers, Think about the places where they don't normally have that kind of activity. Those people are going to be going online to buy that stuff because they're just in a state of shock. They don't even know what to do. And then like in California right now, they got all that rain, but they also got snow for some areas as well. Things that are completely unexpected. So there's some areas of the U.S. that are experiencing unprecedented weather that they're not used to. And so listing those things that they might need from little hand shovels to the bigger shovels. If you're doing drop shipping and you know, the generators, if you're doing drop shipping, like there's opportunities everywhere when it comes to supplying those things. And they're still going to be hot and people are still potentially going to be buying them depending on where we are. When the groundhog comes out, <laughs> he says we got eight more weeks of winter, people will still be buying or grabbing whatever they need to, just to get through the next, whatever it looks like. So, we still have some time for the groundhog, but, you know, I think it's going to be a long one. I wouldn't be surprised if he sees his shadow and got eight more weeks because this weather has been weird. Real weird. <laughs> so upcoming holidays and major events in the first quarter. So we have Valentine's coming up. We have the Super Bowl coming up in a couple of weeks. I mean, we're in playoffs right now with the NFL, so... You know, you got to keep your ear down on who's going to be in the Super Bowl because if you can get hold of that team's merchandise, everyone's going to be buying stuff for the Super Bowl parties and and such. They want to buy the little football-shaped chips bowls and, you know, for when having their friends over because, you know, last couple of years they couldn't really have parties with, you know, COVID, but you now that everything's kind of loosened up, they miss those parties. They want to have some fun with some of their friends. So, I think there's going to be a lot more parties this year. I think this is going to be the year of the party. <laughs> <laughs> so I agree with Kelly on that. And, you know, you got after Valentine's Day, you got St. Patty's Day. In between there, you got some major months. So the month of February is Black History Month. Uh, the month of March, I forget what it is. But my point is, is that you have some 
major things that are coming up and people are going to be buying either products, uh, ordering products, whatever it happens to be, not just products, items, whatever, merchandise that they want or need because of those things that are coming up. So pay attention to those. Planners, calendars, and journals. Again, back to, I don't even know if I spelled journals right. Anyway, back to the beginning, you know, of what people want to do at the beginning of the year. And so, you know, you got to get a planner and a calendar. We actually, I went and got another calendar from the Dollar Tree today because we needed to write a calendar down for when we're cleaning out the storage unit in the garage and which weekends those are going to be. And then also the weekends in which we are, you know, which the church, we have a couple of churches that we visit and which churches we're doing where and when Bible study that they're going to be part of. So I was like, okay, we need a calendar that's a community calendar. So my boys each have their own calendar and then we have the community calendar and that hopefully keeps us set straight. And um, it's a reminder of what's coming up or what we're going to be doing when we go to whatever it is, whether it's roller skating or going to a baseball game. Um, and so that's one thing. The other thing is this year I'm forcing my boys to journal. They're not happy about it. It'll be okay, <laughs> but they're going to be journaling. And so a journal is new. We've been trying to do, I feel like for seven years, which is really bad, but we're going to journal. And uh, I think it'll be good for them as they continue to get older to be able to express their thoughts. So just to kind of think about their day, especially, I mean, I think for those people that are dealing with mild depression or whatever, just being able to come back and reflect. I, I One of the things that I had been forcing my boys to do over the years, it's like, okay, tell me one thing that you feel like went well today for you or well, one thing that you feel went right for you today so that that way they don't dwell on whatever bad thing happened in the day because one of my boys does suffer from mild depression. And so I've been reading for years of journals help and I been trying to get him to start and we start and stop and start and stop. So I said, okay, this year we're not doing that. We're doing this every single day. So I'm going to journal with you. We're going to journal with each other. <laughs> So yeah, moving differently in 2023. That's my goal. That's my objective. So people are buying these things for many different reasons, for different purposes. Anything you want to add to that, Kelly? And don't worry about the accessories for journals because, you know, those who do the bullet journals, then they got to have all the little pens and the, or the stickers to make it look all cool and such and to make it own personalities. I mean, I've I tried to do bullet journaling and I was in a Facebook group for a little while. And oh my goodness, these people are like, you know, they're like, you know, artists and everything and make a whole theme for each month. And, you know, it just, and then have all these crazy drawing skills. I'm like, Oosh, I don't have time for all that. <laughs> she said, I'm lucky just to be able to document what I do document. But yeah, people are buying these things. And so as a seller, like this is something that you could be listing. I bought a boatload of um, Ted Lasso <laughs> calendars. I've been selling Ted Lasso calendars. And uh, yeah, it's just, um, just selling calendars can make you some money. It's part of the journey. So I hope this information is helpful. We do have a print-on-demand workshop, and we're doing a three-part series as we speak about journals and plan and planners and calendars. And in this three-part series, we're going to be talking about physical products. Um, then we're going to be talking about digital and downloadable uh, printable products. And then in the third part, we're going to be covering um, KDP uh, products and or books, planners, coloring books, puzzles, all that. So if you are a person that is interested, this is our high level training that is coming up. It is starting tomorrow. And so I invite you to join us in the training. It's at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's free for Academy members. You can go and register at SWIY.co forward slash POD ESA 0123. Again, SWIY.co forward slash P-O-D E-S-A 0123. And again, this is a high level workshop. If you want to take a deep dive, we do have a deep dive workshop that is starting on the 18th where you have an opportunity to take a challenge 
where we're going to be pushing you to do five designs a day. So either one of those, both of these are going to be great workshops um, to help you get a better understanding of print on demand and what are the possibilities. And then if you're ready to put a little bit more discipline and consistency behind it, join us. I think it is February 18th. As I say that out loud, I'm like, oh, you got the date wrong. Um, I think it's the 18th. Yeah, then we're going to start. And so if you want to take a deep dive inside of mastery, we're definitely taking a deep dive so that you can get to five listings every single day when it comes to your print on demand business, five days a week. We're going to show you some tips and strategies that we're going to go through creating those. But the academy training is going to be a real good one to cover to get started. And we're going to talk about where you can put your listings up. All right. If you want to get the replay for the 2023 annual e-commerce planning workshop, you can go to SWIY.co forward slash 2023 replay. Again, SWIY.co forward slash 2023 replay. Go and grab the replay for the annual e-commerce planning workshop. Let that help you. Um, if you didn't grab a planner, get the planner, but let that help you to put together your game plan for 2023. Don't get through January without having a plan for the year. Even if it's not e-commerce, if it's something else, at least write down some ideas about what you want to do in February and March and April, May, June, July. Write down something, even if it's only five bullets per month, write down something that you want to accomplish or three bullets or one bullet. Write down one thing you want to accomplish each month so that that way you can start working towards achieving that goal little by little and making some progress. So go through the annual planning workshop. I believe it'll be a blessing to you and your business. And you can listen to the replay and check out all three in the series. Um, as I mentioned before, the um, annual, the, uh, I don't know why that says that, but it's, <laughs> uh, it's the entrepreneur Bible study. I think I was doing a graphic and I paste the graphic at the beginning. So anyway, um, the 2023 e-commerce planner, you can grab that still at uh, myecomplanner.com. Again, 2023 e-commerce planner, you can go to myecomplanner.com. And when we do the detailed workshop, we'll be talking about that in the mastery workshop starting on, on the 18th about how we pulled together the e-commerce planner, where how, you know, how we designed it. Where did we come up with the design? Where did we come up with the covers? How did we put that together? How do we create the listings? Like we're going to go through that in a deep dive. If you want to know, if you want to go behind the scenes to see what we did. And because I think that there's an opportunity for you to be able to um, create your own products in 2023. As you know, every single year, people are buying help, self-help, self-care, self-everything. And they're also buying planners, journals. And so why not get into the game? Um, if you want to sign up for Ecom Sellers Academy and the lifetime membership, you can sign up and get a free e-commerce planner by going to ecomsellersacademy.com right now. Again, go to ecomsellersacademy.com to sign up for the free lifetime. And then last but not least, if you need to get some leads for your business, your arbitrage business. Um, get 50 leads every single week, uh, 200 leads a month. It's $50 a month. You can go to ecomsellersacademy.com forward slash R-A-O-A leads. Again, ecomsellersacademy.com forward slash R-A-O-A leads to get going. So with that, I've escaped a whole bunch of times. <laughs> Let me take this off the screen. It's me and Kelly. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Kelly, for joining me. Well, this has been the Econ Sellers Podcast. We do this every Monday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We hope that you will tune in again next week for another episode of the Econ Sellers Podcast. My name is Nicole Whitlock. And I'm Kelly the Econ Mom Ward. And we're glad that you're here. So we hope this information is a blessing to you. We hope to see you next week in the Econ Sellers Podcast. We're going to say goodbye for now. Bye, y'all. <laughs>